Louis Cachet, Count Grishnok, or as most people know of him, Varg Vikernes, is the sole member and mastermind behind the black metal project, Burzum, or as Varg calls it, Butsum, that is arguably the most controversial musician to ever walk the face of the earth. And if you're wondering what kind of legacy he's left behind, let's find out. In the very beginning, prior to Burzum, Varg was only 15 years old when he started his first project called Urukai. What's interesting about this is not only is it Varg's first project, but you're noticing already at the age of only 15 years old and as it was recorded in the late 80s, Varg already had a fascination with ambience as there are ambient tracks just straight up played out on the Urukai uh, material, along with some other tracks that have guitars being played. And again, it's only guitar riffs. There's no drums and there's no vocals. Showcasing that what Urukai is for a lot of people that know of it is it's the prototype for what Burzum was going to become. A few years later in 1990, Varg would find himself integrating more into the extreme metal scene of Norway as he was actually part of a death metal band called Old Funeral, which crazy enough actually had a bath from Immortal or before he started Immortal in this band as he played the bass and did vocals. And while Varg did the guitars, I think, for like a year or two from 1990 to 91, they never recorded music together. However, what is crazy that you can search up here on YouTube is that there is a live show that Old Funeral did, I believe, in 1991, if I'm not mistaken. And Lord and behold, you can see Varg playing a concert in a band, which is just weird to see considering the fact that I feel like for anyone who knows Burzum and is aware of it, knows that Varg never wanted to do any live shows with Burzum, and he never did for its whole time that it was active. So again, to see Varg play guitar live in a band, it's just something I thought I'd never come across. Shortly after that, in 1991, Varg leaves Old Funeral and starts his own project that of course we all know as Burzum. After releasing a handful of demos, Varg would catch the attention of Euronymous, the guitarist for Mayhem and the owner of the label Death Like Silence and this is where he would get signed under his label to put out his records and in 1992 he would release the debut full-length album which is the self-titled Burzum. What I find really interesting about Burzum besides the music which I'll be talking about in a little bit is the overall aesthetic of this project. You see Varg was always looked as the outsider and black sheep of the Norwegian black metal scene. While everyone else was focused on Bathory and Venom, Satanism, and all of this evil stuff to make black metal come off more intimidating and give it its own flair, Varg always had more of an interest with a lot of his own personal stuff. For example, the band name, Burzum, comes from the black speech of the Tolkien universe that translates to darkness along with the album artwork and lyrical themes that not only were based off of the Tolkien universe, but a lot of the fantasy RPG board games that he was playing. That a lot of the music you're hearing is more of like Varg's own interpretation of these fantasy worlds that he had a fascination with. As for the music that you can hear on the debut full-length album, what's always funny that uh, I come across when I was reading a lot of Burzum interviews or Varg interviews I should say is that Varg has never considered Burzum at any point to be a black metal project he's always considered it to be a heavy metal project and that's it which is just funny because all of these years later everyone looks at it as a black metal album it was a part of the Norwegian black metal scene so even though Varg still claims it to be just a heavy metal album Let's be real, for the rest of the world, it's considered to be a black metal album. Regardless, what we end up getting on this album is arguably the rawest black metal album you can hear in the Burzum catalog. For me personally, this has always been my least favorite Burzum album, considering the fact that even though it's the rawest, there's nothing distinct about the Burzum sound just yet. And a lot of people tend to criticize Burzum that it's very repetitive. 
which there's a reason for that and I'll touch upon that later on with some of the al other albums I'll be talking about. But yeah, on this album, a lot of these songs range from 7 minutes plus and you will be getting a lot of repetition with the guitar riffs in each individual song. Even though this album, oddly enough, has one of my personal favorite Burzum songs, that being My Journey to the Stars, and I will give him credit for the fact that with his vocal approach, it's really harsh and like throaty sounding, so it almost feels as if he's kind of, again, finding his own unique style with uh, his vocal approach, which I'll give him that. And you can hear bits and pieces where he plays around with ambience throughout the album, sprinkled throughout it. It's just, again, my uh, problem with it is there's nothing distinct about his overall sound just yet. Especially when you consider the fact that it has the song War, which um, I think is one of, if not the shortest metal song Varg would ever write, that has that really goofy intro where it goes, This is War. Huh. Wow. And what proceeds after that is what a lot of people tend to criticize negatively of a blatant ripoff of a Bathory song, Necromancy, if I'm not mistaken, that the guitar riff is identical to it. So again, for me personally, this has always been my least favorite just solely because it's a black metal album and Varg's kind of finding his way with the overall sound, but he hasn't stuck the landing just yet. Fast forward a year to 1993, and as most Burzum fans know with their history, all hell would break loose in this particular year. But we'll start it off slow, as in the beginning of 1993, Varg would release for Burzum his EP called Aske, or as it's translated in English to Ashes. Musically, this EP isn't really anything different from the material you can hear on the debut full-length album, as it's more of that slow, mid-tempo, raw, black metal approach. Musically, that's all that I can really say about it, per se, other than the fact, too, that it would have Samoth from Emperor actually play the bass, I believe, on tracks one and three, if I'm not mistaken. But what's really fascinating about this particular EP is literally everything about it that isn't the music. As I'm sure you guys are aware of at this point, Varg was accused, though never committed, and he even denies it, which, let's be honest, he really did do it, of the church burnings of the Fantoff Church back on June 6, 1992. What we end up seeing here is more of Varg's true colors and personality, because the reason for this arson wasn't for any kind of like satanic means, but more so because he wanted to destroy these churches as they were a desecration of Viking temples and Viking burial grounds, and he wanted to do it on June 6 as it would be the anniversary of the Viking raid of Lindisfarne. What I personally find very suspicious is that even though Varg claims over and over again he never committed this arson, he was never charged of it, is that in the first press LPs that, if anyone ever bought them back when they were released in 1993, not only do you get the album artwork of the Fantoff Church being burned in these ruins, but it would also come with a Zippo lighter. Which, let's be honest, Varg at that point, along with the label Death Like Silence, was basically just taunting the fact that they did this and got away with it. However, what I find just extremely ironic about this whole circumstance with this EP and the events that happened is that how many people tend to paint Varg as this terrible individual, which yes, I'll get to that later on with all the things about him personally, but I just find it extremely ironic that leave it to Varg out of any person out there to make people be sympathetic towards a church. Because if we didn't have the Burzum logo here and we didn't have uh, you know, the album title, the EP title, I should say, attached with it, and we just see a burnt church, everyone would be like, fuck yeah, church bad, Christianity is terrible, all it's done is cause so many wars, look at Christianity, it has all these priests that just, you know, do all these sexual things with little boys, fuck Christianity. Like, if there was just, like, some anarcho-radical leftist that burned a church, 
That would be the response. Yet when Varg does it, it's like, oh, come on, look at this piece of shit bragging about his arson. How dare he do this? Like, again, as I stated, leave it to Varg to make people out of nowhere become sympathetic towards Christianity. I just find the irony of this to just be through the roof. But the church burning fails in comparison to what is arguably the most infamous thing to ever happen in black metal, that being when Varg murdered Euronymous, or as he puts it in self-defense, back on August 10th, 1993. I personally feel like I don't need to waste too much time talking about this particular event as it's just so infamous in black metal's culture, basically. But I'll try to just give a quick rundown and uh, breeze through it as Varg always had like bad blood with Euronymous from the start considering he always thought Euronymous sucked at being a businessman. He owed Varg a lot of money for all of the albums that uh, people were buying up at his shop. So there was bad blood to begin with already, but what really set it off is that when Varg overheard a conversation with Snorri, who is in Thorns, have a phone conversation with Euronymous, and I believe he was on a third line over here in the conversation, and he heard that Euronymous wanted to torture Varg, hit him with a stun gun, if I'm not mistaken, tie him up, torture him, throw him in the back of the trunk of his car, and basically murder him in this snuff film, as would be this next evolutionary extreme for black metal. So with Varg overhearing this, he then set out on August 10th with Snorri from Thorns to go to Oslo and arrive at Euronymous' apartment, I believe at 3 in the morning, and he would want to get rid of and essentially kill Euronymous in this self-defense uh, predicament, as Varg puts it, because, um, again, he always viewed Euronymous as a threat. But when you arrive at someone's apartment at 3 in the morning and they answer the door and they see a man with a knife come at them and then run away and then you proceed to stab that man 23 goddamn times, it's like when you view it on court paper, it doesn't look so much like self-defense as it just looks like vicious, cold-blooded murder. As for my two cents, not like it really matters, because if you want to disagree with me on this, go right ahead. But a lot of people tend to state that Varg is this murderer, and that he's a convicted convict, and he's terrible, and he is for doing so. I know in his mind, he still views it as self-defense, and so many people tend to bring this up when talking about how much of a terrible person he is. Now, with my two cents, I know I'm going to come off like I'm this big fanboy for him, which trust me, there's a lot I disagree with him, which I'll bring up later on in this video, but are we really going to pretend like Euronymous is this patron saint? Again, this is the same guy that was starting to piss off a lot of people, especially the people in his band, such as Necro Butcher, which I know Necro Butcher a few years ago talked about how he wanted Euronymous dead, but Euronymous is the same person that told his vocalist for his band Mayhem back in 1991, Dead, hey, uh, you should kill yourself, and that would be really black metal, and convince Dead to do so, and when Dead committed suicide, what did Euronymous do? Well, he just took a knife, the shotgun, put it right next to Dead's body, and took a picture of it, and used that picture for a bootleg of Dawn of the Black Hearts, the live album, to sell more records for black metal because he figured as if that was the next extreme for the genre. Again, Euronymous is not this innocent, you know, patron saint. He was a scumbag too, and let's be honest here, for a lot of people in the Norwegian black metal scene for the time, a lot of people saw that coming. Now as if being a murderer wasn't crazy enough that again, Varg always claims was in self-defense, it only gets crazier from here because on August 19th, nine days after the murder of Euronymous, Varg was arrested and the police went through his apartment and found explosives and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. 
The reason why he had such weaponry is kind of clouded in mystery, mainly because what a lot of people think it alludes to, and what Vard claimed it was for in a 2009 interview, have very different answers. But again, this is Varg, who tends to kind of stretch the truth a little bit and is often criticized for kind of not being always truthful in interviews, so take it with a grain of salt. So the reasons as to why a lot of people assume Varg would have such weaponry is he was planning on committing a terrorist attack and a bombing on this anarcho-punk venue called the Blitz House. And the reason for this, as people tend to assume, is that Varg thought the communists in that venue wouldn't be too fond of the idea of him murdering Euronymous. And I think the only reason as to why people thought he thought this was because Euronymous always proclaimed that he was a Stalinist. And I think, honestly, Euronymous was just being edgy with this, considering the fact that he thought he was a Stalinist because Stalinism caused the most suffering out of all the political ideologies. So it felt as if Euronymous was just being edgy for the sake of black metal, evil, and suffering. So I never really took that um, statement by Euronymous at any point to be serious, but apparently Varg did, so that's why he wanted to get rid of the communists, as people tend to uh, allude to with it. Yet in a 2009 interview, when this was brought up to Varg, he states that he had all of that weaponry because he wanted to defend Norway if it were to ever be attacked. But that still doesn't answer the fact that if, if he was planning on committing a terrorist attack. So it's just like, you know, whenever you think, man, Varg has done such heinous and crazy things, like, you know, the church burnings, which I know he always denies it, but let's be honest, he, he did do that, and murdering someone, you find out, hey, he was planning on doing a terrorist attack, because... This man just can't be crazy fucking enough somehow. Yet, with all the church burnings, murders, and crazy events that were happening in Norway, what I've noticed, and this is really insane, is all the discussions about these events, a lot of people tend to view it as this was a good thing for black metal, and essentially made Varg become the face and head helm of the Norwegian black metal scene. Because what was really interesting that was brought up in the... Uh, Burzum retrospect done by Downfall Network, and I'm pretty sure it was Brody doing the narration for it. He brings up the fact that, yeah, as sadistic as this sounds, Varg murdering Euronymous was actually a good thing for black metal because it gave so much media attention on this niche little thing in Norway that it propelled it into the stratosphere, making it seem as if now black metal is more widely known among the metal world all over. So again, as sadistic as it is, Varg murdering Euronymous actually benefited black metal as a whole. With all these crazy events happening, believe it or not, Varg was still active essentially with Burzum. And in the same month, I believe it was August 20th, he would release the sophomore full-length album for Burzum, that being Detsum Engen Var. This would be the first and only record Varg would self-release under his own label, that being Simophane Records. Hate to show my bias here, but I always had to admit, this has always been my personal favorite Burzum album, mainly because this is Varg truly fleshing out Burzum's sound to something truly unique. While yes, it still has that raw black metal approach that we would know Burzum for, What's interesting about it musically now is I truly feel like this is Varg's best approach on the guitars as it feels a lot more progressive sounding, it feels a bit more eventful, that even though these songs are roughly around the same length as what you would hear on the debut full length album that range around like 5, 7, and even 9 minutes long, again, they have more of this progressive um, writing style to it, which always felt like as if you're getting to like such a journey to get to the end piece, as it feels more eventful and climactic. What's also interesting about this album is all the instrumental tracks that are just straight up ambient music, or as some people proclaim it to be dungeon synth, as that's typically a more synthier take on 
dark ambient music. But what's interesting about these particular uh, ambient tracks is it showcases now Vargas fleshing out Burzum more. He wants to bring ambience almost to the point now where it's almost 50-50 with the black metal take. And what's important to bring this up is, yes, while it is repetitive and simplistic, Varg's looking for that minimalistic approach to give off more of these simplistic compositions that's easier to follow along with. Really making it as if ambience and atmosphere is truly the thing that's going to engulf you in this fantasy-like world that, again, he's always had such a fascination with and having his own, again, take on the subject matter. Several months later, Burzum would release the third full-length album, Hivisly Set Taras, which translates to English to Until the Light Takes Us. Around this time, Varg was dealing with all of the trials of the murder that he committed, and yet he was still able to release music mainly because, I believe around it was like 93 a year before, he had a lot of music that he finished but he had no one that would actually put it out. So it was being released at a steady pace of all of the stuff he finished a year prior. Hence why he was able to release Hivis the Setar Os around the same time he was doing a trial. Now this album tends to be what's widely received as one of Burzum's best albums and I believe too in an interview Varg stated that he thought this was his best work he ever did. Personally, I think what makes this album so good is this is the real first album that we're hearing ambience and black metal not being played so much in an album separate apart, but actually cohesively side by side here. Thus, everything tends to be more melodic, and again, while it is simplistic and repetitive, really builds more of the ambience and atmosphere that truly makes Burzum a uh, really important figure in all of black metal, and it's extremely influential. As I stated earlier in this video, a lot of people tend to criticize Burzum for being boring, repetitive, and mundane on how the guitarists are played, which, fair point, yes, we all have our taste, but it does make sense as, yes, when you listen to a Burzum song, the guitarists will be repetitive, but that's kind of the point, and I know I'm, like, again, coming off like a fanboy here, but what Varg was doing was different from everyone else. Again, I still believe he was kind of like the outsider among the black metal scene of Norway of his time. Because while everyone else was looking for influence from Venom and Bathory and all the proto first wave black metal bands a decade previous in the 80s, Varg was looking at inspiration from a lot of the electronic music scene as he really had a fascination with it, most particularly The Cure's disintegration and dead can dances within the realm of a dying sun. If you listen to these albums, or at least you're aware of them, then you know that both The Cure and Dead Can Dance use a lot of electronic elements in a very simplistic way to build upon the composition with ambience and atmosphere that, yeah, it is simplistic, but it engulfs the listener, and that's what Varg was trying to do with his approach onto black metal with Burzum. So yeah, you can say Burzum is repetitive, it's boring, it's just all the same thing all the time, but you're kind of missing the point here. It's all about building simplistic compositions with ambience and atmosphere and engulfing the listener. Hence why I feel like it's become this kind of like entry gateway type of a band for a lot of people trying to get into black metal. Because while everyone else in the black metal scene was trying to be more aggressive, angrier, meaner, and eviler, and just so be on the cutting edge of aggression, Varg showcased to everyone that there's a lot more to the dynamics of black metal than just that, and really expanded its sound to a whole new region, I feel like. And for a lot of people, he would stick the landing with this approach two years later in 1996, when he would release the fourth full-length album for Burzum, Philosophum. Backtracking a bit, Varg was sentenced to prison, I believe, in 1994, again, for the conviction of murder of Euronymous, I believe, for, what, 21 years? But he got out, I think, in, like, 2009 or something, which I'm getting a little too ahead of myself here. But somehow, while being in prison in this album, 
uh, being released in 1996 and he went to prison in 94, he was able to release this album mainly because from what I read, he got everything recorded for Philosophum back in March of 1993 and it was just kind of like shelved for a while, but finally it was released in 96, again, while he was in prison. Regardless, what we got with Philosophum is arguably the fan favorite and tends to be a very popular black metal album all of these decades later that I would say arguably, from what it seems by the black metal fans, the gateway album to get into black metal. As I'm sure everyone who's watching this has listened to this album at least once, or you've seen the album artwork, but yeah, for a lot of people this is his best work as he perfectly blended the elements of black metal and ambience side by side, especially through the first half of the album, as the riffs tend to be a lot more atmospheric, the ambience tends to be really easy to follow, his vocals have a lot more of this reverb effect to it, thus making it a little bit easier on the ears to uh, digest everything, and what you get is one of the best atmospheric black metal albums really ever made. But the standout track that everyone points to is the 25 minute long mammoth of a song that is Norwegian so I can't pronounce the actual title properly but it translates to circumventing the support of the transcendental singularity which yes I had to look at my computer to make sure I said all of that because it's a mouthful of a title but as I stated it's 25 minutes long of just ambience and what's weird as simplistic and repetitive as it is as most Burzum songs are I find this song to be kind of soothing and addicting not just solely because I've heard it so many times as I think I've heard it once utilized in this like dark web pain Olympics video of someone self mutilating their genitals which I know it's one crazy way to uh, hear this song but I know a lot of that's fake and I've heard it used a few times in the movie for the soundtrack Gummo, which was pretty cool. But it's this slow progression that makes it so enticing, almost. I know there's not really a lot happening, as most ambient songs are very simplistic. But I guess the best way I could describe it, as most of you already heard, so you don't need to hear it from me. But it tends to be like the perfect background music you will ever need. Overall, I just find the track to be really soothing, and when it comes to ambience composition in the most simplistic yet accessible ways, Varg was just really talented at crafting ambient music. At this point in the video, I've now discussed the first four Burzum albums, which tends to be the ones that people mainly gravitate towards and still talk about highly to this day. Everything past Philosophum, we get to the <laughs> prison era of Burzum and then the post prison era of Burzum which wow what a what a timeline but you'll tend to notice now during these parts there's quite the transition not only with the musical aspect but the lyrical aspect as well when Varg was in prison from 1994 up until 2009 he was only able to release two albums First one came out in 1997, which is titled in the English translation to Baldur's Death, but the Norwegian pronunciation, which I'm going to butcher so much, so I apologize, is Daudi's Baldur's God? You have every right to make fun of me for that uh, pronunciation. It's just a straight up ambient track that from what I searched up in interviews he was able to record all of this with a MIDI keyboard and then at separate times uh, record everything and produce it onto a computer when he had the leisure time in prison and yeah this is an album that it's rare you will find people talk about mainly because the production value is um, pretty rusty and a lot of people I've noticed in the reviews you can find on the Metal Archives tend to make fun of the instrumentation on here as a lot of the horns sound like farts, which, um, yeah, it doesn't really sound like horns. And again, it's a really rusty album 
that even the percussions um, don't really sound that good. But the one thing I will give this album that I find fascination with is even with the simplicity and bare you know, uh, equipment that Varg had with just a MIDI keyboard, the composition aspect of this is still really tasteful. And if you're looking for more of like the lo-fi, pagan, uh, I don't know, synth music, I guess, it does have some interesting features, but uh, let it be known this is definitely not an album for everyone. Then two years later in 1999, he would release the sixth Burzum album titled something I cannot pronounce, but I think in the English translation it's either Earthquake or Lateral Tremors, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to butcher the uh, album title here. But now again, this is just straight ambient music, but he has now a synthesizer. And um, it's not really that eventful, other than the fact if you appreciate all of the ambient tracks you will find scattered through the previous Burzum albums, maybe you will find appreciation with this. But again, it's another album that's often ignored because it doesn't really feel that eventful. If you're looking for the black metal approach in the Burzum catalog, everything that Varg was able to release while he was in prison from 97 and 1999, you're not going to get that, which is why I do feel like it's so ignored by his fans. But yeah, it's just an ambient album, and that's all I can really say about it. After the release of the sixth full length album, Varg would remain silent with Burzum for 11 years, which is kind of obvious considering the fact that he's in prison and it's already difficult enough to release music. But what is interesting that you can find is all these interviews of uh, people interviewing Varg when he was in prison for that time. And while a lot of these interviews aren't really asking anything that interesting other than what does it feel like to kill someone? What are you doing in prison? How is prison? It's just like the same questions over and over again from each one I read. What is interesting though is how Varg kind of answers all these questions, that he was finding comfort in prison, almost like it was a monarch for him, that he was finding peace in the solitude, and personally what I think ended up happening with his experience in prison is it kind of, you know, hardened his overall beliefs, both politically and religiously, because when you compare all the black metal albums of Burzum from the 20th century, that has to do more of like these fantasy-like themes that Varg was finding fascination with, and all of the black metal albums of Burzum in the 21st century, you're noticing now that uh, the political beliefs of Varg and the religious beliefs of Varg start coming through, and there's a noticeable difference. So now we're in the 21st century. It's 2009, and Varg gets released from prison. It would only be a year later that he would pick up the pieces and continue on with Burzum, because in 2010, he released the seventh full-length album, Bellus. While this would be the first Burzum album in 11 years, for the fans, this would be the first real black metal Burzum album in the past 14 years. Stylistically, it has all of the tropes and components you would assume would happen in black metal with tremble pick guitars, a lot of blast beats, it's very fast paced, and Varg's vocal approach, again, still has that raspy, wretched scream that uh, is pretty distinct for his overall writing approach and execution. And I would say, musically, if you just want another black metal album that's performed very solidly, yeah, Bellus is a great continuation for the black metal styles of Burzum that we know. A year later, in 2011, we would get the eighth full-length album for Burzum, that being Fallen. What I consider to be the best post-prison Burzum album, which is one hell of a way to hype up an album. But here now we're noticing that there's a lot more melody, Varg's singing, and there's a lot more harmonizing effects with this album that for me personally, I've always found this to be more memorable. That I would say that it's a bit underappreciated for the people who just admire the musical work of Burzum. I think this holds up just as good in terms of quality as the classic era of Burzum that we all talk about endlessly. And a year after, in 2012, Varg would release the last 
black metal album in the Burzum catalog, that being Unz Guitar, which has all of the components that you're familiar with when you compare it to Fallen as it's aggressive and vicious of the black metal approach, but it has more interlude tracks with the clean singing and folk instrumentation. And as I stated, this would be the last Burzum album that plays in the style of black metal and just metal as a whole, as again, VAR claims it to be just a metal band. Because everything after this, from 2013 onwards, VAR takes the approach of Burzum from black metal to either ambience or just folk music. Because with the follow-up in 2013, Sol Ostun Mani Vistun, which probably said very wrong, so go ahead and make fun of me for that, is just a straight-up ambient album that, again, you would find from all the stuff he kind of did while he was in prison, just having more of this composition aspect with it to make it feel a bit more eventful. I would arguably say it's more of like this mixture between ambience and, like, neoclassical music that, again, if you just want more music to be, like, background... Uh, music for just like the overall composition aspect, I do feel like there are some uh, moments on the album that shine through, but again, like most of the ambient albums that are in between all the black metal stuff, I don't really feel like it's going to appeal that much to the black metal audience that Varg has attracted throughout the decades. Following that in 2014 would be The Ways of Yore, which is just really a straightforward traditional folk album with like these pagan themes scattered throughout it. And what you're going to hear essentially is Varg playing acoustic music and he's singing now. And uh, I would arguably say this album's a bit underrated. I mean, again, it's not going to make any black metal purists fall in love with it. But uh, definitely give this album a shot. I do feel like Varg's singing and overall composition with the more minimalistic approach on folk music can be a bit compelling. And I think as a folk musician, he can still pull it off. But again, like most of the things I've been talking about thus far that isn't black metal, I really can't picture many black metal fans who fell in love with like maybe Philosophum or Det Some Ang on Var to find that much enjoyment with this. And then in 2020, we would get the last full-length album for Burzum, unless Varg decides to reignite his ambitions and start up Burzum all over again. But Thulian Mysteries, as of right now, is the final Burzum album. And what this is, is again, Varg venturing into more of folk territory, but how he blends the synthesizers and ambience together, it's often characterized as neo-folk, which makes sense with the experimentations that he does, that again, I do feel like he can still write some really compelling folk music, and his compositions, as simplistic as they are, are easy to follow along with and kind of enjoyable. But as I keep repeating myself, and I'm sorry that I sound like a broken record here, I just don't feel like his black metal fans will find enjoyment with it, but for people who enjoy folk music, you might do, just because, again, I think his composition and songwriting is really solid. As for the conversation on the musical aspect with Burzum, I guess the only other thing I could include, and this happened pretty recently, is Varg released a single for his fantasy role-playing game My Fargo, that being the reincarnation of Odin. It's only two and a half minutes long. It's just an ambient build-up to the game, and that's really it. But as it stands, this single is the final thing in the Burzum discography. Okay, so I've gotten through all of the music of Varg's work in Burzum, but I think it's really important now to talk about Varg as a person in this uh, aspect of the video because, as I stated way earlier on in this video, he's a very controversial individual, not just because of all the things he did in Norway when he was a part of the black metal scene, but now all of the political activism and all the things he did when he had a YouTube channel that he said throughout the decade. As for Varg's relevancy in black metal, there is a bit of irony with it because 
I do understand the fact that he's a very predominant figure when you look into the Norwegian black metal history, that to learn about Norwegian black metal and not bring up Varg is kind of like learning about World War II, but I can't bring up Adolf Hitler. Or it's kind of like learning about cosmic horror, but hey, don't bring up H.P. Lovecraft because these individuals are, you know, controversial and you don't want to learn about them. But as history has shown time and time again, history is supposed to be unapologetic. It's supposed to make you almost kind of be angry at it. If history disgusts you, then history is correct. So yes, Varg is a very influential figure and he's very predominant in black metal for everything that he's done and for the time being I don't really feel like his relevancy is going to diminish at all to be honest with you and I'm not just saying this because oh I enjoy some of his records therefore you know don't crucify him don't criticize him and give him a break if you disagree with him if you hate his music if you hate Varg especially I get it I really do I'm not gonna you know hold it against you. You have every right to be against this man's viewpoints for, again, the heinous things he's done and the crazy things that he's said. But what is important, I really wonder this, honestly, after all these decades that, you know, Varg and his Project Burzum has been, you know, laced and stamped onto black metal, is what is honestly supporting Burzum more? Is it the people who like Burzum or the people who hate Burzum? Seriously, ask yourself this. Because I know at first glance you might think, uh, obviously the people who like him because they buy his music. But I, I ask this because honestly, when I see Burzum being brought up more than ever, it's less about the people who like him. And I just continuously keep seeing people always you know, make video essays, uh, you know, blogs, or websites talking down on him, which I get. Trust me, again, as I stated earlier, I understand that. But I feel like that's what's made Burzum just be so relevant in black metal still to this day. Again, Varg stopped making black metal back in 2013, a decade ago. Varg has stated numerous times in interviews he has no interest with black metal. Hell, he hates black metal. He's even stated once before if he had the uh, option to either go back to prison or hang out with metal fans, he would go immediately back to prison. And as of recently as I stated, he's thrown in the towel with making music for Burzum as a whole. He hasn't made black metal since 2013. 2023, he's announced that it's done for good. So how is this man, who wants nothing to do with black metal, has stated in multiple interviews he has a strong distaste for it, still remain relevant in black metal all these decades later? Which is why I ask, are the people who dislike him still making him relevant? So I know there's that term, all publicity is good publicity, which is oddly something we all agree with, yet when it's towards something that we don't like, we kind of like throw that notion out the window. I'm trying my best to state all of this as respectfully as I can. Again, I get it if you don't like Varg as a person. I really do. But I truly feel like the thing that will be the end of his relevancy in black metal is when you just all stop talking about him. I get showcasing your frustrations and you want to express that, I truly do, but in the end it's just making people talk about him more. I'm sorry, the, the notion of Burzum will always remain relevant because you're giving him publicity. This is Varg. The guy doesn't even do any forms of marketing, mainly because he hates capitalism because it's a modern way of society and he wants to go all the way back the age, to the age of his ancestors, I get that, but anyway, again, Varg has never done any marketing, so how? what's selling his records? I truly do believe it's all the publicity that people who don't like him have to keep announcing, because for the past 10 years, it's all I've seen. I truly believe that that's the main thing that kind of keeps him relevant, and yes, there's all these controversies surrounding him from you know, the murders, church burnings, and the radical uh, political ideology he has. And you can definitely, again, disagree with all of that, but it doesn't change the fact that it's just still making him relevant to this day. 
So I guess my advice, even though this is kind of like me being a massive hypocrite because I just made this whole video, but for the people who do not like Varg, who wish his relevancy would disappear, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't say it ever will in black metal considering the fact that he is just this big figure in it when you look at the history of it. But I think what would help to let his relevancy dwindle, which oddly enough he wouldn't mind his relevancy dwindling in black metal since he wants nothing to do with it, is to honestly just stop talking about him. I know, again, I'm being a hypocrite here by making this video, but yeah, to the people who don't like him, years down the road, I do believe that will diminish his relevancy year by year. It'll take a while, but I think that's how his, you know, music, his influence, and everything else you don't like about him will go. Until then, I hate to say it to the people that don't want to hear it, his relevancy and influence is honestly here to stay. As for the musical impact overall, if you're looking at this as just a music fan, Burzum is very substantial. I feel like for any black metal band that, that wants to blend atmospheric black metal or ambience together or a combination of the such, can look at Burzum as influence from Leviathan, Zaster, Paysage Diaver, Druth. I would even say Wolves in the Throne Room kind of did with that Celestite album that was just all straight ambience and everything before it. There are just too many bands to name that take clear influence from him, and if anyone states that he isn't that influential, the only people they're really fooling at that point is themselves. Regardless of what you think of Varg and Burzum, whether you enjoy the music, you hate the music, you find somewhat of agreements with Varg, or you disagree with everything this man has said, there's no denying that he piques the interest of countless people out there. And to me, I guess, as to why I think people find interest with him, is he's just this abnormality of a human being in society, I feel like. And no matter what, I feel like he'll always have people talking about him. Whether he sticks around for a couple more decades or when he passes on, he'll always be talked about to a certain extent. And he's made his mark in this world, even if it is in the most crazy and controversial ways that, I don't know, what he's able to do correct, regardless of what you think of him, is getting people to talk about him. And that'll do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know this is a really touchy subject, but I tried my best to do this in a respectable way. And uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. So like always, guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.